Hi all. Today we are going to look at item 45 of FFT Java on minimizing the scope of local variables. Before going ahead with this item, let's understand what is scope of a variable. Let's say in this class, I declare a variable i int i equal to 10. So, what is the scope of this variable? So, scope of this variable is limited to the block in which it is declared. So, here i can be accessed within this block. So, I have the value. Let's say I have another block here. If i equal to 10, then do something like mj equal to 20. Just print out the value. So, here what is the scope of this variable j? So, it is declared within this block. So, scope of this variable j is limited to this block. Scope of i is limited to this block. So, this variable j I cannot access outside this block. If I try to access, it will give me a compilation error. So, as you can see, it cannot be resolved to a variable. j cannot be resolved to a variable. So, this is about the scope. Now let's understand, so what Joshua Bloch is saying about the correct usage of scope of a variable. So what he is suggesting in this item is to minimize the scope of a variable. Why to minimize the scope of a variable? Let's say for example, instead of this, I declare variable here. So it actually widens the scope of j, so j can be accessed within this block actually my intention is to use only within this block so let's say for example I have a code like this where I have to increment the value of i by 1 instead of i by mistake I type it as j so it will give, my, give me some results which is not intended it's not correct but here it is not obvious here there could be there is no compilation error it is running fine so it is not obvious until we run this program and validate it. So that's the reason what Joshua Bosch is saying is declare and initialize the variable only where it is used, very nearest point. So if I declare it here, obviously here I am getting a compilation error j. So j here it is not in the scope. So in the comparison level only we can fix this kind of errors so it will avoid a lot of uh, tracking of the bugs and debugging so this is the part so and another main advantage of why we have to minimize the scope is readability let's say I have declared the variable here And there are some code here. Okay, in between there are some code. So here I am using the uh, variable j here. So if some other developer is trying to read this variable, it's very difficult for him to understand what for this variable was declared and what was its value. So it's always advisable to declare and initialize the value very nearest point where it is used. Someone has uh, rightly said that programs are made to be read by humans and only incidentally for computers to execute. So it is always a good practice to uh, have this in mind that whatever the program I am writing, it is for other developer who is going to read this, who is going to understand this and who is going to maintain it. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, try to understand how to minimize the scope. So as we already discussed, declare the variables where it is used. So always declare the variables nearest point where it is used. So there are, there are some restrictions, uh, there are some exceptions to uh, where uh, uh, Java cannot allow us to do this. So there is one exception to this. So we'll, uh, we'll see this now. Let's say for example, uh, for uh, variable j 
j we initialize a value which is written by the method m1 which takes a let's say some integer value and okay let's say if i is less than 0 let's say it is uh, throwing some uh, checked exception some checked exception otherwise it is fine and it can return some value it's a very trivial and simple example just to explain the concept and as you can see here it is already complaining so surround with try catch now How to it uh, mandates me to initialize with some default uh, value for integer j. So as you can see, this is some kind of a ugly way of uh, initializing the declaring and initializing the variable. Then we are initializing a value which is written by a method which throws an exception. This is one exception uh, in minimizing the scope of a variable, but in general always ensure that we initializing we are declaring initializing the variable nearest point where it is used so this try catch is an exception so that is what uh, joshua has mentioned uh, explicitly in in this item okay uh, there is another uh, very nice way where we can restrict the scope is usage of in using the loops basically so let's see how to do that let's say for example i'll just get rid of all these things so let's say for example i have a list and say l1 I want to print the elements here so let's say I will uh, use the iterator and uh, let's say I will use iterator and has a next element what I do is print the next element Till now, yeah, so I'm able to print the elements. So let's go ahead and print the next list also. So it seems like its logic is same. I will just copy it and paste it here. And uh, I want to iterate the next list. Let's say it's a uh, I go and I want to just print it here. What happened? So it's not printing one two for me. It is printing just a b. What could be wrong here? So as you might have already noticed, this variable i one it's a copy paste mistake. So here I have not updated this with i two. 
compiler has not complained so it's running without any issues but the only thing is the intended results are not there so this is another problem where if a variable is outside the scope this variable scope is not limited to only this loop it is also available here so there's a problem with having a variable in a larger scope how to restrict this now let's use our traditional for loop here let's see results without changing data and any other things so that is because the scope of this data is only limited to this for loop so it is always advisable to use the for loop whenever we are trying to use uh, some kind of a incrementers or some where we have to check for some conditions so that's the reason joshua blog prefers to use for loops instead of while loops so on the last point what he mentions is keep methods small and focused let's say this is one met, uh, functionality where i want to print the values and this is another functionality let's not mix these both functionality in a single method there is a high chances that i may use one variable declared somewhere in this functionality in another functionality so it's it's always a good practice to have a single activity in a single method one method one operation so that's the whole point of uh minimizing the scope in a single method so that's it uh, for this item 45 hope it is useful to all of you and if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the below section uh, thank you all thanks